Make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you can be alerted when new content is released. Enjoy the video. And all of those cars and homes and whatever that is, here are symbols of what it looks like when a person actually arrives at this concept called abundance, right? So if those things help them to associate with something that creates a feeling mm -hmm. of abundance, and they're building their vision board to help them to get clear on their intent, then that's fine because they're associating objects or things or material things that they'll say, that's when I know that I'm abundant. That's fine. Uh, other people will say, look, abundance just means that I have more than I need. And I'm happy with that. And for them, there's a feeling that is associated with that. And when they begin to dream about their future, they may see themselves in a scene or see themselves a certain way. I don't care what it takes for the person to get there because once they have their abundance, and this happens quite a bit in our work, when you finally have everything you want, there's only one thing you're going to ask yourself, how am I going to contribute to the world? Mm -hmm. How am I going to make a difference? So we use different tools to help people to get to that point. But if the person's doing the vision board and they're saying, when I get my new car, I get my new house, I get my new relationship, then I'm going to feel so great. Now that, well, then they're back to the program waiting yeah. for it to happen for them to feel the emotion. They're, they're believing their outer world has to change in order for them to feel better. There's, there's no effect of drawing the experience to you with that way. So the person has to use those tools to get them into the emotional state for them to feel like it's already happened. Now think about this. If you get up from a creative process and you feel grateful, you feel a love for life, you feel a joy for existence, you feel a passion uh, to for the moment, uh, you will not be looking for your future because you'll feel like it's already happened. It's the moment that we start feeling those self-limiting emotions that we feel separation, and then we start looking for it again. And well, then if you're waiting, you're not creating, you're, you're in separation again. So then, yeah. so then whatever it takes for you to move into a state of being, and what is a state of being? Thoughts are the vocabulary of the brain. Feelings are the vocabulary of your body. How you think and how you feel creates your state of being. So then if you wake up in the morning and you come, come back to your senses with a clean slate and you say, I don't feel anything, and you say, well, let me start thinking about all the problems in my life. Well, all those problems are connected to different people or different objects or things at different times and places. The moment you remember your problems, a memory is a record of the past. You're thinking in the past. Every one of those problems has an emotion associated with them. So all of a sudden you start feeling unhappy. You start feeling bitter. You start feeling frustrated. So now your body's in the past. So then most people then create a state of being that's connected to their past. And if they're in the familiar past, then they are going to crave the predictable future and they're going to fall back into routine. Mm. So then we want people then to get very clear on that vision of their future, however they do it, and begin to combine that clear intention with an elevated emotion. And the stronger the emotion they feel from the vision they're creating, the more altered they feel inside of them, the more they're going to pay attention to the pictures in their mind. And now they're remembering their future. And biologically, it's exactly the same as remembering your past. In fact, if you're not being defined by a vision in the future, it means you're making your past more real than your future. Mm -hmm. You're falling in love with your past. You're more in love with your past than you are with your future. That you're believing in your past more than you're believing in your future. When you get to that moment where you have that feeling, that's your compass because that feeling is going to drive your behaviors. It's going to drive more of those thoughts. And when you feel that feeling and it's visceral, no person, no thing, no experience will stand in the way between you and that vision. And, and you will be initiated in, by the universe into wealth. You will be initiated into health. You'll be initiated into freedom. Those people, all those people that have healed themselves of all those different health conditions, they are so humble and so happy 
and they feel so great that they would never trade this feeling because of what you thought of them. They, they, they've, they've left that program behind a long time ago. They actually don't care how you think of them. They, they actually are so happy with themselves that they are no longer dependent on anything outside of them. Now, I think that's a really important moment because that's the moment we give people permission in our lives to do the same, right? And I think that more and more people are beginning to figure that out uh, as they do this work.